I regret getting a vasectomy, and in this video, I'm gonna give you the political, the personal, and the practical reasons why I think getting a vasectomy is a bad idea. So today's question is from a 42-year-old viewer. He's a married man with two daughters, and he and his wife are considering having him do a vasectomy. He says, my wife is pressuring me to get this vasectomy. And so for those of you who don't know, uh, vasectomy is a form of contraception where the man undergoes a form of surgery that removes his uh, ability to produce or, or to ejaculate seeds, right? You become basically seedless. So you're still blowing loads, it just doesn't have the, um, the genetic material to produce children. And so this is what people do who are uh, so-called done having kids and they wanna continue to bone. And I totally get it, I've been there, bro. And so for me, it was four kids, girl, 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 boy. And then that, once the boy came, my wife and I decided, or had a conversation, and then I agreed, right? Because it's always really up to you to agree to get a vasectomy. And I'll tell you what, uh, for all the reasons, I'll explain later why I think contraception as a broad umbrella for vasectomy is a bad idea. There were some nice things that came out of it. So of course, you know, now we're having sex without worrying about having children and my wife got her body back at, you know, the age of 32, 33, 34, uh, because she started working out at my gym. Never before did she do that because she was pregnant for like the past 10 years. And so we had a nice sort of remote romantic revival in our marriage when most of our friends were busy having kids. Our, we were done, we had four already. And we started dating again and going out and partying, having fun. It was like, it was a cool new, it was a cool little intermission season in our life, given that we started having children so young. And you know, while our friends were partying, we were making babies and building businesses, and then the inverse happened. And so, you know, I'm grateful for every experience in my life, but in retrospect, there are things that I wish I would have known and considered um, before making such a decision that you're considering making now. So. My three Ps, meaning political, practical, and personal reasons, unfold as such. So politically, the very first thing you gotta understand is that pedophilia runs downhill from contraception. When you remove procreation from the sexual act, you change the meaning of the sexual act. When you change the function of a thing, what a thing actually does, you change the meaning of it. For example, I have a pool in my backyard that is meant for pleasure. My children go and splash when it's hot outside. But if there is a hurricane situation and there's no clean water, that pool goes from meaning pleasure to meaning survival. Totally changes it. And when you change the meaning of sex, you literally change the meaning of what a penis and a vagina is. And today, you know this whole joke, this meme, what does it mean to be a woman, is a byproduct of, well, you have a sterile vagina. It's no better than a butthole, right? Which then leads to homosexuality. The reason I say it's political is because, well, you know, we have a political spectrum and there are those on one end of the spectrum that love transgenderism. They love pedophilia. And it's, it's the deepest, darkest, ugliest, far reaching end of, hey, we just want to have sterile sex. And I know that this may sound ridiculous, but over the course of 100 years, it has gotten us to where we are right now. And if you like minor attracted people, you think that's a good thing? Well, we disagree. And so look, it's like, it's political, it's spiritual, there's a lot of bad stuff going on there. And it all starts with this separation of the meaning of sex with the sexual act because our contracepting. Also, so moving on, you know, the second reason being practical actually grows out of the first. And so I'll open the second reason with this statement. Contraception is a feminist weapon. When we contracept, gender relations are flipped upside down. And so in, in, in a, a non-contracepting society, men rule. In a contracepting society, women rule. And it has to do with the gateways to sex and relationship. Women are the gateway to sex. Men are the gateway to relationships. And depending on where the gate is, in front or in back, depends on the fate of the society. When the gateway to sex is inside the bounds of marriage, relationship, 
inside the protection of a man, then society flourishes because men decide who they're going to bone based on who they're vetting for marriage or for long-term relationship. But when the gate to sex is put in front of the gate of relationship, then women rule because now they decide who they're going to have sex with, relationship or not, meaning relationship has no meaning anymore. And the gateway to relationship being subverted by the gateway to sex, they become dumb and hypnotized by the free candy that's out there and all of the sex that they can get that's free. No consequence. And so women are out there wielding their vaginas as, you know, whips. And we got a society of pussy whipped men who all think they deserve sterile transient sex with hot girls. And meanwhile, the girls are running the show. It's a fucking mess. Contraception is to blame. It's a part of, it's a weapon within this whole war, right? And then the third reason, which is my personal reason, which is it, causes me to see my wife differently. If I know that when we engage in the sexual act that we're open to life, rather than there's no consequence to this. And I think it's important for a man to create space between his impulse and his action. And if I have an impulse for sex, but then there's thought before I pursue, that opens a gateway for all kinds of amazing possibilities. Rather than I have an impulse, well, it's free sex, let me just go bump, blow my load with my wife. And where do you draw the line? I remember Napoleon Hill talking about most men reach their financial peak in their 50s because they stop boning. God bless the man that doesn't need to bone. Or the man who's discerning about when he has sex, even with his wife, done.